Hey everybody, welcome back to Better Computer. My name is Matt, and my favorite thing to do on this channel by far is to take complex productivity software and make it more approachable, make it more accessible to more people, to really simplify it down to what you can do to get started with it, how it can make your life a little better, and not get too deep into the weeds. Honestly, I think that Productivity YouTube has a bit of a problem when it comes to apps like these note takers, especially like Notion, Obsidian, Rome Research. People have a tendency to go just incredibly hard on their videos and to say like, look at this mind map I've created and look at how my entire life is in here. And honestly, I find a lot of that to be unhelpful. Like it's aspirational, I guess. And if you watch this as entertainment, then I guess maybe it's cool to see what people are doing. But honestly, I'm not convinced that a lot of productivity YouTubers are actually using their systems the way they show them on video. And I don't think that they're actually useful to most people. I think most people can do like 1% of that and still get value. And so then we're going through Obsidian. I'm going to show you how I would set up Obsidian for a new user who just wants a nice app for taking notes, for recording things, for writing some basic stuff, and just wants a nice note, notes app. And I think Obsidian can do that for you, but you don't have to go crazy on it. So let's jump into the screen share and I'll get you started with Obsidian. Okay, so we're on the Mac and you're gonna to want to download Obsidian, which is completely free uh, from obsidian.md. You can download it for Mac OS, Windows, Linux. On desktop, it's also available for iOS and Android. And the steps are gonna be the same no matter where you get it. I'm doing it on a Mac just because it's easiest for me to uh, show. So um, the first time you launch the app, you're gonna get a screen that looks like this. Now you're not gonna have any vaults over here on the left. You need to create your own uh, for the first one. So let's do create a new vault. You need to name it, uh, it can be whatever you want. I'll just call it ABC for a better computer. And then you need to pick a location for where this is going to live. So Obsidian is just a folder with files in it. Uh, so you can sync it over something like Dropbox or OneDrive. Uh, on the Mac, it's gonna default to putting it into your Obsidian iCloud folder. So it'll sync over iCloud. This is what I'm gonna do in this case, but you can use any syncing service you want, or you can just save it locally to your device and have it never go to the web. Um, Again, I like having access to multiple devices, so it'll go into iCloud. So there we go. It has a name, it has a location, and let's create it. So that's it. Now you have a vault, it's created, and there's really not a lot here. So Obsidian should do more with onboarding. I hope that's something that they're working on um, for the future, but there's really no guidance on what to do. So that's what this video is for. So the first thing we need to do is make this look a little nicer. So Obsidian looks fine by default, but I think we can make it a little nicer. So go down to the settings option down here. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of command comma on a Mac or control comma on Windows. And we're gonna do a couple things first. So first off, it defaults to dark. You can adapt it to the system or light mode, whatever you want. I'm gonna use light mode just because I think it looks better. And then there are themes in Obsidian. So you can actually change the accent color or you can install some themes. So here's what we're going to do. In themes, instead of the default, uh, there's this very popular one called minimal. And so you can just click on this. There's a description here uh, with screenshots and a whole bunch of info on it. All you need to do for our purposes here is install and use. There we go. Now it's installed. It's installed the theme. It's using it. And the interface is slightly tweaked. Now, it defaults to this kind of grayish blue uh, accent color. Let's go ahead and do something just a little brighter, a little friendlier. Let's do that. So now we have a blue accent, and now the interface is going to look just a little nicer. So minimal is the theme that I'd recommend. You can change the accent color. There's more you can do here. Again, um, you can read the documentation on that listing. So if you go in here, there's a ton here that you can customize. But that's not what we're here to do. We just want it to look nice out of the box and then you can go further on your own. Although before we move on from the theme, there are two other things I wanna to touch on real quick. Uh, number one is the fonts. You can change the fonts. So your theme will have a default font. I think uh, Minimal uses Inter, which is totally nice and looks great. Um, but maybe you want to have your interface do something different or the text or the monospace, like you can change these. Uh, so for the text font, let's go ahead and change this. You can do any uh, font that's on your system. I actually have one called Atkinson Hyperlegible, which I really like for writing and reading. Um, so I'm just going to save that. You're not going to see any changes here, but when I create my first note, you're going to see this font being used. You can do this for the interface, right? Like we could use uh, this not good interface font here, and it's going to change the whole interface to use that font, and then you just exit out to delete it. But uh, yeah, you can change the fonts so you can find something that works nicely for you. Additionally, I know there will be people who don't like the non-standard Mac interface here. Um, it kind of does its own custom 
uh, toolbar or title bar or whatever, frame style, um, you can actually go down here and change this to the native frame and then relaunch the app. And on relaunch, you're going to have the standard Mac OS or Windows or Linux or whatever frame up here if that's your preference. I actually don't prefer that. <laughs> I like uh, Obsidian's custom thing. So I'm going to go to the hidden default and that's what we're going to use from now on. So next we're going to want to create a new file to actually show something. So testing is what we'll call the file and let's just put some lorem ipsum there and we'll say uh, this is a test. There we go. So we've got some text here and obviously the lorem ipsum is not all real words and I have a couple typos in this sentence. So it's not showing those, it's not spell checking, which is kind of annoying. So we can go ahead and go into the settings and under editor, you want to scroll down a little bit and under behavior, enable spell check. And if we get out of here, you can see, hey, look at all those. All those are here and you can just right click and fix these. Cool, perfect. Um, additionally, uh, you could like tab and say, this is a new line. This one is not. Cool. And you can see it's tabbed two uh, spaces in. Again, if I go back into the settings, go under editor and scroll down a bit, uh, we have tab indent size. It actually defaults to four. I have it set down to two. You can move it all the way up to eight if you prefer. So if I move it to eight, now you can see this is way indented. If I go back here and set it back to the default of four, it's a little more reasonable, but you can change the indent size to whatever you'd like. Now, Obsidian is not just for text. You can also bring in attachments, other files. So I have an image file right here, and if I drag it into Obsidian, you can see there it is, and it's just nicely in line in the file, and I can, uh, this is more text, right? Um, and so you can just bring the file in line. That's all great. But over here, you can see, oh, the image is actually loaded in the same level as my um notes and so like if i create a new note uh new note and then here's this my image is kind of in the same list and i'd kind of like to not have those be here right so what i would recommend most people do is set up an attachments folder um so what you can do is not just create new notes but you can also create new folders so let's create a new folder called assets it can be named whatever you want um, i'm going to call it assets um, and generally it'll be where my images go um, so Let's go into our settings now. So the folder is called assets, let's remember. And what I wanna do is go to files and links and there is gonna be an option, here we go, default location for new attachments. So it defaults to vault folder, which is just the same folder that all your notes go to, but we can specify um, a folder, we can put in the same as the current file, whatever. Um, I wanna put in a specified, specified folder um, which is right here. It's going to show you a drop down of all the folders in your vault. So right now we only have one. You can also search for it if you have more of them later. I'm just going to call it assets. There we go. And now when I close out of here, this note or this file is still here. So let's go ahead and delete this. And that's going to make this no longer work. Uh, but if I go up here and drag in this file again, you're going to see it's brought in and is in line and everything, but it's not cluttering up my sidebar. That's because it's in the assets folder. There we go. And again, if you wanted to, uh, just so we can be clear here, you can reveal this file in the uh, finder. And so you can see iCloud Drive, Obsidian, ABC. And here's my testing file, which is just a markdown file. Here's my new note one. And under assets, there's the image. So that's kind of what's happening behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, basically that makes it so now that we've set up an assets folder and we've told Obsidian to save new um, images into that, that's where they're all gonna go and they'll just be down there. You can, again, you can filter it however you'd like, but that's how I like to do it. So all of them are in just one directory and then my notes kind of live on their own and don't get cluttered with images, videos, or whatever I'm adding to my notes. So at this point, you should be relatively good to go in terms of just taking notes, bringing files in, making sure they don't clutter your sidebar. You can create um, like a folder called archive right and then like this new note drag that into the archive and now it's there and you can only have the files you're working on here you can organize it however you want we're not going to get into that because that's going to be different for everyone but that's how you create folders um, and how you can create notes and all that good stuff the last thing i'm going to show you today is how to use some community plugins 
which is really where Obsidian gets lots of, lots of its power, and we're not going to go too deep, but hopefully you'll get some good ideas for what uh, could be useful. Um, so here's one example right here. So I've got my note here, and I say download Obsidian here, and I've got the URL copied to my clipboard, and in most apps, what you can do is paste onto that, and it will automatically create it as a link, but it actually just replaces it with the link here. So let me undo that, and we're, our first community plugin is going to help us with this. So I'm going to go into the settings, go to community plugins, and we're going to turn them on. They give you some warning here, um, but we're just going to turn it on, and you can go ahead and browse uh, the directory. There's 904 plugins shown here. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to get these, but uh, this is the easiest. So the first one we're going to do is called, uh, what's it called? Paste URL into selection. This one is great. So this does exactly what we're talking about. And just like the themes, you've got kind of the readme down here uh, from GitHub that shows you how it works. This one has a nice GIF that shows you how it works, um, but we kind of know what it's expected to do. So let's just install this. It's installed and then you have to enable it. So now it's enabled, you can do some stuff with it, but uh, we're just gonna use it straight out of the box. So again, I'm going to select this text, I'm going to paste, and hey, download Obsidian here, there's the URL, it's a nice markdown link when I select, or when I move the cursor out of it, it's just nicely formatted. So that's um, an essential one. I think if you do anything with putting links into your text, you're really going to appreciate this one. Again, this one is called uh, Paste URL into Selection. Another really cool one is actually going to help reduce some of the stress you might get from all the things that are in um, Obsidian. Uh, this one's called Hider. And so what Hider does is basically lets you go through a bunch of different things in the app and, you guessed it, hide them. <laughs> so let's go ahead and enable that and we're just going to go to the options right here. And so this is a list of all the things you can hide in the app, right? Um, so maybe you don't want to see scroll bars. Maybe you think those are cluttering it up. You can get rid of those. Um, hide the vault name. Sure. I don't even know where that is going to show up, but you can do that. Hide the status bar. Um, hide the app ribbon, right? So there you go. Um, that's uh, this guy over here. You can hide that. Hide the tab bar. Get rid of that. Like you can hide these elements and just simplify the app a little bit. This is a really nice one if Obsidian is just a little too much for you out of the box. This next one I made a whole other video about, so I'll link to that uh, kind of up here and in the description. Um, but it's called uh, Shortcut Launcher, and it's from uh, Mac Stories, the guys over at Mac Stories. And basically it's a way to use your Obsidian notes as inputs for shortcuts. And so again, this is really complicated. I could get into it uh, pretty deep, but I'm going to actually just uh, get out of here and open up my vault that I use for... Uh, for real day to day and that's this guy right here and it's basically syncing in my readwise highlights into here so I can create blog posts uh, link posts based on them very easily so I've got kind of some metadata about this article I've got the highlight that I highlighted and if I wanted to create a blog post in Ulysses for this all I hit is command P uh, to start this going I have it called uh, shortcut launcher Ulysses post hit enter and now Ulysses opens and here's the name of the article, here's the author and the title, here's the link to the page, and here's the highlight that I had highlighted. And so now I can just say, like, this sucks, <laughs> right? Um, and it's a post and I can publish it uh, to my blog from Ulysses. That's really awesome. Again, watch the whole other video to see how it's set up. But if I go into my settings uh, in here, go to community plugins and go into shortcut launcher, uh, options. You can see I have one called Ulysses Post, and it's basically you give it a name, you tell it the name of your shortcut, which is what you have in the Shortcuts app, and then what are you feeding into the shortcut. Really complicated. Hold a video about it. I'll link it in the description. So yeah, I would recommend if you're looking at this and you're browsing around, um, go to the community plugins page, and this is sorted by popularity, so you can see what things people are using with Obsidian. Um, you can do some tables here, um, data view, templater. Templater is really nice if you want to have like a note template. So like when a new meeting starts, if you want to create a template for like um, listing who's here, what's talked about, all that good stuff, you can use templater to create that. Um, you can create a Kanban board. Like there's a lot of stuff here um, that we're just not going to get into. But yeah, hopefully this video was helpful at getting you at least a little more comfortable in the Obsidian interface. 
Um, again, if you go into settings, we only looked at some of the stuff in the editor, appearance and plugins, but there's more you can do here. There's a lot of canvas stuff that's pretty advanced. Um, you can set hotkeys for basically every single action in the app. You can customize it to whatever works for you. So tons of power here, but hopefully this makes it a little less intimidating and you know what to do from here on out. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.